So how did this happen last night? K-State loses by five at home to Oklahoma State in a game that the Cowboys really controlled, man. I mean, Oklahoma State did not trail from the eight-minute mark of the first half on. K-State spent basically the entire game playing from arm's length behind of Oklahoma State, a team that was last place in the Big 12, only had one Big 12 win before that game last night. Okay, this is a team that had not been very good. I'm going to explain it in a couple of parts here, how this happened. One, well, I did just set up Oklahoma State the way that I did. That is a team that's been getting better, and that is a team that was better, far better than the way they played for a while there in Big 12 play. Oklahoma State was picked sixth in the Big 12. This was supposed to be a year where the Cowboys took a step forward. They returned virtually their entire lineup from last year and added in some nice recruits, three four-star recruits in the recruiting class. At one point this year, Oklahoma State was ranked in the top 25. Uh, They won the preseason NIT. So Oklahoma State had fans thinking, hey, this is going to be a much improved team. An injury hurt them. They tanked for about a month. Now over the last two weeks, Mike Boynton last night, the head coach of the Cowboys, pointed out two weeks ago is really when this started, that they seemingly turned a corner. He feels like they have turned somewhat of a corner. They beat TCU. They almost beat Baylor right before playing K-State. I do think Oklahoma State is playing better than what they have. And I think that is a part of this. That's not an excuse. That's an explanation. If you're asking me how this happened, the K-State lost that game last night, that's a part of it. Oklahoma State is at least a middle to lower pack Big 12 team. They're not far and away in the basement, far and away the worst team in the Big 12. I think another big thing that's happening here is K-State's freshmen have hit the freshman wall, which is a dreaded thing that you'd never want to deal with. But last night, K-State's freshmen combined Antonio Gordon, Dejuan Gordon, Montavious Murphy, they were 1 for 10 from the floor, 5 points, 3 rebounds. That's not going to get it done. K-State doesn't completely rely on those three, but they need more than that. Definitely need more than that. So that's that's a big part of this, and this is about the time of year where you really see this kind of thing happen. I think back to Barry Brown in his freshman year, and Bruce Weber talked a lot, not just that season, but then in referencing some other freshmen in years to come afterwards, that that – That's about the time, mid to late January, when you start getting into about the midway mark of the Big 12 season, that's where these freshmen hit the wall. They're not used to playing this many games. They're not used to the grind of this kind of a season. And right now, I I went back and cross-checked. It was Barry Brown's basically January 14th to February 16th where he hit that quote-unquote freshman wall. Uh, Barry Brown only hit double figures twice in that span. He shot 30% from the field, 21 of 70 um, and that's where Bruce really felt that it happened with Barry Brown. As good as Barry was, and as much of a leader as he was, and trying to figure it out and grind his way through it, it happened. So I think you're seeing that happening right now with with some of K State's freshmen here. Also, Xavier Sneed continues to struggle from the field. I mean, that's you know Xavier goes three for eleven last night. This team can't take nights where Xavier Sneed is not a scoring threat. And last night, he was not much of one. The two worst, if you go by Ken Palm O rating, I like that stat more than just looking at a normal box score because it takes into account everything that happened in the game and just how efficient and effective the player was offensively overall. Uh, Xavier Sneed's two worst offensive rating games have come in the last two weeks. So if that's happening, K-State's going to struggle because the Cats need his points. I mean, this team really does struggle to score. That's an explanation. That's not excuses. I'm not excusing any of this. Uh, When your roster is in this position where three freshmen hitting a wall and Xavier Sneed not developing into the player that you hoped he would be this year, when that happens and then your team is losing at home to Oklahoma State and in last place in the Big 12 over halfway through the Big 12 schedule, you have problems. Those problems were created by the roster situation that you're in and a failure to be able to get this team to come together and play better than the sum of their parts right now. And that's definitely what you have. I would not excuse that. Um, It's been pretty bad, especially in a year where the Big 12 is not very good. Outside of the top four teams, and Texas Tech seems to have played its way into that category. I may have said three teams a couple of weeks ago. But outside of the top three or four teams, this league is not very good. Oklahoma might be in the the tournament right now if the season ended today, but I don't believe that they're a very good team. The bottom five is certainly very bad. And so for you to be sitting at the bottom of the Big 12 is not a good thing at all. Not at all. In fact, shout out to KSU underscore fan on Twitter, who's a great follow if you're a K-State basketball or football fan. 
If the season ended today, it would be the worst league winning percentage for a K-State head coach since Tom Asbury was the coach back in 1999. That year, Asbury finished 2-14 and in the Big 12. Right now, the win percentage is just barely above that. It's about a, uh, it's a .180, like an 18% win percentage in the league right now for Bruce Weber. That's not good company to be keeping, man. That's not good company to be keeping. Jim Wooldridge uh, finished better than that every single year percentage-wise in the Big 12. Now, they still have a lot of chances to pick up wins. TCU is uh, – you think K-State's playing poor basketball right now. TCU has been just as bad, and they've lost six straight, including getting beaten by about literally almost 50 at Texas Tech uh, earlier this week. That's who K-State has on Saturday. But let's talk globally about this season, okay? Big picture, what does this mean? Where are things at? I had legitimate optimism that this team was going to be able to win five, six Big 12 games by the end of the year, and that's because of the way that this team ended January. I felt like the West Virginia win, the Oklahoma win, um, even coming back against Baylor the way that K-State did, playing at Alabama as tough as K-State did right after the Kansas stuff happened, I thought there were a lot of signs of life that this team was getting better. Unfortunately, now that regression has happened. And Bruce Weber even confirmed last night. I asked him, hey, is that erased totally all that momentum? He said, yes, no doubt that it has. And this was supposed to be the part of the schedule where things eased up. K-State had a front-loaded Big 12 schedule. You had back-to-back games here against bottom-feeding teams in the league, Iowa State, Oklahoma State, and to not really be very competitive in Ames and fall behind 21-2 to and then back that up with not leading past the eight-minute mark of the first half at home against Oklahoma State. Yeah, it's two of the worst performances of the year at the worst time for this to be happening because now now there's no excuses. You're fighting in your own weight class. For a while, K-State had gone through that Big 12 schedule where in, in a lot of those games at West Virginia, at Kansas, uh, Texas Tech, like you're, you're fighting out of your weight class. So it's a little bit easier to say, all right, well, featherweight, 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 Featherweight and welterweight, I just combined those two. I don't know boxing very well, but, you know, featherweight going up against a heavyweight, okay, we can we can find some reasons for why this is happening and why you're not playing well. Now, I mean, Oklahoma State's in your weight class, and, and K-State is still not finding a way to win. And as you can imagine, it's leaving Bruce Weber very, very frustrated after the game. I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory here. So Bruce Weber, on Monday at his press conference, made the statement that, he was going to start coaching this team differently. And uh, here is the audio of that. I think I've, I've decided I'm going to coach them harder now, to be honest. I, I, for a while there, I was trying to be, oh, you're okay, we're fine, give you hugs and kisses and all that stuff. And I literally have kissed some guys in practice, uh, you know, just trying to make them feel good. Um, and, you know, now I'm just going to, I'm going to coach them hard. If they don't like it, they don't like it. That's fine. We've, I'm going to try to do it the the way I know and and the way it's the I think you can be successful. Okay, so Bruce Weber is going to be tougher on this team. Then that got brought back up in a question after the game in the post game press conference on Tuesday, and Bruce Weber he had an issue with the way that the question was being asked. Bruce, you made mention yesterday that you wanted to coach the guys harder. No, I think you took that totally out of context and totally wrong. I said that I am going to continue coaching them harder or coach them hard. When you go three games in six days and you lose tough ones, you know, as a coach, you back down a little bit. You know, you're trying to keep them positive and feel good energy and hug them and kiss them and make them come back. You know, now, yes, yes, what I told you yesterday, we came back on and Sunday, watch film. I said, this is the truth, guys. This is, we got to get better. We can't keep doing these things if we're going to make progress. And, and you know, I, I wasn't going to, that's all I was saying. Uh, if you came to the second practice, when I asked everyone if they could come and if they wanted to come in the summer before we had a little press conference, you would have heard me yell more than I yelled all last year. If you would have came to the practice in the fall when I said everyone could have come, I was embarrassed how I yelled. But, you know, it, obviously I haven't done enough because we, we're not uh, tough enough. And, and it's, it's a shame. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to recover now. But all I can do, that, the shirt, the T-shirt that they had, family and, and stronger together. And that's all, that's all we can be. We can be a basketball family. And uh, that's why these guys came here. Now, there's some backstory there, okay? I think Bruce Weber is frustrated with 
who the question is coming from. Not everybody in that room had been to every single media event, and there was an open practice early in the year where he did yell and scream quite a bit, like a lot at this team. So he he knows the perception out there of him and that fans grill him and media grills him a lot. So I think there's some frustration. Hey, you're going to come in and grill me after this game when you're not at every single event. I think that's a part of what happened there. But also, Bruce Weber is just very at the end of his rope. He's tried a number of different things with this team, and it hasn't quite worked yet. So he's a very frustrated coach in the midst of a very frustrating season. I know it's really cool to pick apart everything Bruce Weber says, and you can certainly take that quote and be like, well, I mean, what, it's your, I've seen it all on Twitter. It's your job to be the one that makes this team tough, and okay, you're saying this now. You're just now realizing that. Like, look, guys, a lot of you don't like Bruce Weber. It's not been a good season. You're going to pick apart anything he says. Do you want brutal honesty from Bruce Weber? Do you want him to say, hey, I, don't, I just don't have enough talent on my team? That's what's happening here. I had two bad recruiting classes. The kids that are on my roster are not very talented, and that's the problem. You want him to say Xavier Sneed, Cartier Jada, McCall May Ween didn't take a step forward, didn't develop like we'd like them to. Uh, Mac has confidence issues. Xavier pushes himself too hard, and Cartier Jada can be too lackadaisical. I mean, is that what you want? <laughs> like, Bruce Weber's been criticized for not defending Cartier Jada enough here over the last couple of weeks. So, for him to go to, it's just like whatever he does, the Bruce haters are going to hate Bruce, and everybody's going to pick apart every single thing he says. And I get it. I get it. I'm not telling you you shouldn't be frustrated. Bruce Weber can be a frustrating coach because not everything is polished in the way he presents himself to the media. And Bruce Weber has been very feast or famine in his career. There's no doubt about that. He's been to two Big 12 titles. He's been the most successful coach by, objectively, Bruce Weber is the most successful coach at K-State since Jack Hartman. There's no arguing that. The guy's won two Big 12 championships, and the guy's been to an Elite Eight. All right, those are things that don't happen often here. He also has what looks like now a second season that's going to be five Big 12 wins or less, and that doesn't even include the 8-10 and Big 12 season that had all the Marcus Foster drama. So there's been been a lot of bottoming out kind of seasons that have gone along with this. That can be a frustrating thing to deal with. I I just talked about it. If you go to my YouTube channel and you check out the Cartier Jada video, talked about that with Cartier. He gets more attention for his struggles than somebody like X, even though they may be comparable Because he's such a home run hitter. Swing for the fences. It's either knocked out of the park or he's swinging out of his cleats and completely missing and it looks very ugly. Uh, That's going to be something that draws more of a reaction than a guy who's just up there shortening up his swing, hitting singles. That's that's not what Bruce Weber has been. Um, And I think some of that is just the nature of college basketball. If you're not a team that's getting elite talent year in and year out, this stuff happens. I've already pointed this out on this podcast before. West Virginia's been through it with a terrible season. And Bob Huggins has turned them back around. Nobody's questioning Bob Huggins' ability as a coach. It happened to Long Kruger after Buddy Heald and that senior class left at Oklahoma. It's happened at Iowa State with Steve Prohm. Uh, It happens if you're not somebody bringing in elite talent year in and year out. Now, are the fluctuations greater with Bruce Weber than some? Yes, I think so. And I think some of that is, again, Bruce Weber's not a dynamic personality. Um, Bruce Weber does not do a great job all the time of presenting himself to the media and so it leaves him open to some more criticism and we've seen that throughout his entire time in Manhattan but at the end of the day Bruce Weber is still a pretty good coach and he's the most successful coach this school has had since the 70s and he has the best recruiting class that he's ever had coming in and K-State is in the mix for another four-star recruit right now in 2020 which would be the fourth of the class in Donovan Williams so it could get even better I'll be honest, this season has definitely cast a little bit of doubt to me on his ability to get this program back up and running because I I think the biggest thing I see now is, all right, what's next year going to be? Well, I think next year could take a while to really gel and develop the way that we want it to either. I'm not convinced that next year is an NCAA tournament team, which I would have said going into this year, absolutely next year would be. But we're seeing these freshmen hit the wall right now. I don't know that we've seen enough to say, hey, Dejuan Gordon is going to be that Barry Brown guy. I think there's potential there, but I'm not convinced of that yet. So then if he's not the guy, well, if the guy's coming from the next class, if it's Selton Miguel, he's probably not going to be that guy just from day one. I mean, even with Barry Brown, obviously it took him some time. It took a couple of years. So now you're talking about development with a big, big class that's going to be coming in next season. There's still development time that will be needed there. I think it's going to require more patience than what we thought, and that's definitely frustrating. It's definitely disappointing. But you're not going to get me to say that because of the Oklahoma State loss and because of where this season's going, that this is 
not an opportunity Bruce Weber deserves. I mean, the guy with the success that he's had definitely deserves the opportunity to get K-State's basketball program back on track. And I still think he will be back to the tournament with this program. It might take two years, which sucks and is frustrating. I'm, I will not tell you otherwise right there. But that's happened once before. Missed the tournament with Marcus Foster. Missed the tournament the next year with that freshman group. Then it was tournament, win a playing game, Elite Eight, Big 12 championship. Okay? It's the same thing we've seen play out here before. you got to deal with the ups and the downs with Bruce Weber. Some of you will never like him. Some of you will never accept it. And you're going to be here partying when the downs happen. Okay, that's your prerogative, and that's fine. Things are not good this year. It's been bad. It's been a failure on many levels. I still have more faith than most of you out there that Bruce Weber gets this thing going.